So we're heading over to meet Paul, who's going to tell us more about a very fascinating open source project called Node-RED. Now, first off, Paul, tell us more about your background and who you are. So, hey, Jason, thanks for having me. So, hey, everyone, my name is Paul Vanek, and I'm a software developer with IBM, primarily working with open source AI technologies. So currently, I am working on the Kubeflow project on the ML operations side of things. But in the past, I did spend quite a lot of time in the TensorFlow community, uh, working on a variety of projects like TensorFlow.js, which really garnered my attention because uh, I'm a bit of a web dev guy. So I kind of like the intersection of ML and web development. Excellent. And you know, you've been working on this project called Node-RED. What exactly is that? Yeah, so Node-RED is an open source uh, visual programming tool that offers a browser-based flow editor for wiring together devices, APIs, and services. So you can say it kind of provides a low-code approach for event-driven programming. I think it really lowers the barrier of entry for take or making uh, a variety of these types of apps. So, and since it top, since it runs on top of Node.js, uh, Node-RED can run on a variety of devices like your laptop, the cloud, and even on low-cost hardware like the Raspberry Pi. So if you're working in the IoT space, this is where Node-RED really shines. So to showcase this, here I have Node-RED running on my laptop and the visual editor opened in the browser. So on the left side, you can see the palette, which contains all of the nodes that are installed and available to use. Uh, each Node-RED node has a well-defined purpose and acts as a building block for constructing flows. You simply drag over nodes to the workspace like I'm doing here and string together enough of them. And you can make some pretty powerful stuff. So here I'm making a simple flow that sends an input to an API for interesting facts about numbers. And after you are done constructing the flow, I deploy it. Then, hey, here, here's some interesting facts about the number 42. That's super cool. I like that. And how does TensorFlow.js fit into all of this then? Yep, so good question. So TensorFlow.js and Node-RED fit together uh, almost seamlessly as they kind of both leverage the JavaScript uh, and Node.js ecosystems. Uh, so users can take a TFJS, uh, a TFJS model, package them into a Node-RED node, and use them in their flows to build uh, AI-enabled IoT apps. So what my colleagues and I have done uh, here are built some TensorFlow.js-based Node-RED nodes that can be installed and used by users looking to bring ML capabilities to their apps. Awesome. Sounds good. Let's see that in action. <laughs> yeah, sure. To showcase some of these nodes, here I have a flow that takes an image as input and performs some object detection on it, displaying an image with the detected objects outlined by bounding boxes. Going over the flow, the image input is passed to a TF function node here which allows you to use a TFJS node API and JavaScript for arbitrary scripting, like decoding an image into a tensor. This is then passed to the TF model node, where we loaded a TFJS Coco SSD object detection model. Uh, this could be any uh, TensorFlow model. But from the model, the output from this model will be then sent through a post-processing node where you specify a link to your list of classes. And this will turn the model output into a nicer format like we see on the right. You can use various forms of input. I was wearing a panda mask for that, so. <laughs> Good stuff. Cool. So essentially, you know, you've created a really powerful visual editor that's, you know, not only able to program these really amazing things, but you can also experiment with a number of different TensorFlow.js models. And even better, you can deploy to devices like the Raspberry Pi. Um, so maybe you can tell us more about some of the projects you've created using this system. Oh, yeah, sure. So there are several cool things you can do with Node-RED and TensorFlow.js, especially when uh, hardware is involved. And so I'm excited to share some of the uh, things I was able to do with the Raspberry Pi and uh, peripherals, like, for instance, this uh, motion sensor and uh, a speaker, USB speaker. So here's the first one. So my cat likes to hop on surfaces he isn't allowed to be on, so I wanted to deter him. <laughs> <laughs> so here the flow is triggered by a small motion sensor as I showed before and then using the pre-trained Coco SSD model uh, I used before I check if a cat is detected and so if so I play a sound the cat doesn't like through an attached speaker in this case my cat is terrified of the doorbell sound so that's one way for me to deter him amazing very cool I like that one what else have you got so now this next one is a fun one where I use the same hardware as before, but this time I add 
a spray bottle with a servo motor attached. The servo motor will be able to uh, pull the trigger to actually spray uh, some disinfectant, or in this case, water, on uh, an unsuspecting person. <laughs> so the idea here for this flow is that it'll the object detection model will check if a person is wearing a mask, and if not, uh, well, let's just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> that would definitely get people uh, more motivated to put their masks on before entering anywhere. Yeah, so, so that was a fun one for me. Uh, so definitely wear your mask, people. So for the next flow, a colleague of mine at IBM, Yi Hong, decided he wanted to use a smart garage opener with a TensorFlow model for license plate number recognition. So using Node Red, uh, on his Jetson Nano, he was able to create this flow. So a car pulls up into the garage and a camera will take a photo of the car. Uh, here, a, a GoPro is mounted above his garage. Uh, the license plate in the, image, in the image is isolated and then processed for characters. If the license plate characters match a specific string, then the signal to open the garage is sent. And voila. That's super cool. I love yeah. that. Yeah, so I, I believe he's using a MyQ smart garage opener project to facilitate this, but there's, I'm just, well, in the world of IoT, a lot of smart things you can connect to do a variety of things. As long as you can communicate to it somehow, then you're basically good to go. So <laughs> that makes sense. That's awesome. Um, but really cool, amazing projects there. And I think as JavaScript developers, we can sometimes forget you know, all the places we can actually execute JavaScript. Um, it's great to see some of the potential here for controlling real world uh, physical objects beyond even the web browser. Um, do you have any other ideas you'd like to create in mind or maybe worth exploring for our viewers even to try out? Well, yeah, so before that, I think it's important for viewers to note that with our Node-RED node, you can pretty much use any TensorFlow model uh, that can be converted to the TFJS model format. Nice. Uh, so this kind of opens up a wide range of possibilities. Uh, but I do think people should definitely branch out from just image-based models, uh, like what I've shown here. Uh, perhaps consider ones for things like speech recognition or natural language processing. Uh, for example, uh, here's a flow I made using a natural language processing model. So here, a Twitter hashtag, in this case, hashtag coronavirus, is live monitored using a Twitter node for tweets. These tweets are run through a BERT-based model for sentiment analysis. And then using Node-RED dashboard nodes, I can get a simple visual picture of the sentiment in the live updating graph. Awesome. Very good stuff. And I guess, you know, if people who are watching right now want to go and try this out for themselves, like what links or resources would you recommend? Uh, so there are a number of links I'd like to share. So first, if anyone wants is interested in learning more about this, how we can use Node-RED and TensorFlow.js together, uh, definitely check out the tutorial that my colleagues and I made at developer.ibm.com uh, and its corresponding video on YouTube. Uh, this should definitely get you started using Node-RED and TensorFlow.js together. So I believe the links will be in the description. So yeah, definitely, definitely check those out. Yes, yeah, yeah. so definitely yeah, we'll check put those, those out. those in the description after the show for sure. And uh, yeah, everyone go check those out. And uh, of course, let Paul know your feedback. <laughs> um, yes. So yeah, once again, thank you so much, Paul, for being on the show today. It's great to have you with us and some really, really innovative demos there. And it's great to see how we can apply this stuff to hardware as well. So thank you very much and see you soon. Thanks, Jason.